Welcome back. In this tutorial, I want to go ahead and show you how to work with some of these vector tools here. And the first tool that I want to look at is this tool right here, the rectangle tool. And if I click on that, obviously I get a little crosshair there. And I can press and hold and drag out a rectangle. If I want to draw a perfect square, what I do is you hold down the shift key and drag out. And you're going to see no matter where my cursor is, that's going to be a perfect square for me. Now, you're also going to notice, again, this has a little drop-down arrow in the lower right-hand corner. So if I press and hold on this, you're going to see I have a bunch more shapes here that I can choose from. I'm going to go ahead and check the choose the ellipse tool here, and you can see I can draw an oval. And again, if I wanted to draw a circle, I would hold down the Shift key on my keyboard, and now I can draw a perfect circle. Now, once you have these objects created, if you want to begin to edit them, you need to deselect your vector creation tool here and go back to your pointer tool. Whenever you're modifying anything or whenever you want to delete something, you're always going to go back to your pointer tool here. And you can see I can click on that shape and select it. Now, the properties for this object are going to be down here at the bottom. And for right now, we're going to ignore symbol properties. We're just going to be on the regular properties panel here. Every object inside of Fireworks can have a name. And in this case, this is just named Rectangle. And if I click on that, I've got another Rectangle, Ellipse, and Ellipse there. So there's just some default names put in there. Later, when we talk about slicing graphics up and exporting things, this name will be important. So you'll uh, be able to change that. You can also see you have the width and the height as well as the X and the Y coordinates for this. And you can see as I drag this, the X and the Y coordinates move around. You can also see in my ruler the actual area that this shape is going to take up is shaded in. So that can be very helpful for you. And you can also see those red dotted lines that help me line different objects up. And you can see right now I have this object aligned both with the square to the right and the ellipse at the bottom, the oval at the bottom. And if I drag over some more, I no longer will be aligned with the center of the ellipse, so that item disappears. If I drag down, I'm no longer aligned with the rectangle, but I can quickly drag that back up, and you can see the different options that I have there. And I'll release that. So we've got the name of the object as well as the width and the height and the X and the Y coordinates. Now, here you have the controls for the fill of this object. And here you have controls for the border around the object. Let's go ahead and start with these border properties here. You can see that there's a white square here in the fill box with a line through it. And that basically means that there's no line currently around this shape. But if I click that, I can go in and I can select a different color for the line. And in this case, I'm going to select something real obvious like blue. So I'll go ahead and click that. And you'll see the color swatch fills in with that. Now, right now, this is just a very thin blue line around this shape. But I can change that by changing the thickness right here. I can type a 5 in there, and you'll see I get a much um, thicker border. You can also change the way your line appears. And right now, we can select None, and it disappears. Or I can select Basic, and I can do a hard line, hard line with rounded edges, soft lines, those feather on the ends, or soft lines with rounded. And I'm just going to select Plain Hard Line there, and you can see what I've got in there. And in this case, the fill color changed back to white, so I'm going to change that back to blue right there. So I was able to change some of the basic effects around this uh, shape. Now the fill color is right here, and you'll see that orange is selected, but I could choose a different color if I wanted to. Let's choose that yellow right there, and you can see the fill is set up solid. But if I click that drop down, I can select things like gradients or patterns. And actually, this is going off the screen for me really quickly. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to drag my properties panel up here towards the top. 
and scroll this document down a little bit. And that way you can see this a little bit better for me. So if I click uh, drop down there, I could fill this in with different kinds of gradients if I wanted to. Um, that's the way we get like the gradient backgrounds. Um, and there's also a collection of patterns that you can look at here. I'll go ahead and select cotton as the pattern and you can see the fill that's put on there. Or I can go back to a solid color if I wanted to. I could choose a different color from here. So those are the basic fill color options. And later we're going to look and see what some of these other options do for both the line and the thickness. But there's one more thing I want to show you and I'm actually going to move my properties panel back down here again. And that's going to be this third section over here. And this is the transparency option. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to click on my shapes and delete them. And then I'm going to go ahead and just create two shapes. I'm going to go ahead and choose the rectangle again. And I'm going to drag a shape out. That one will have orange. I'll drag another shape out. And I'm going to change that one to have a, a, a blue background. And actually, we're going to make this one yellow here. So now I have a bright blue and a bright yellow square. Now right now the yellow square was created first and the blue square was created after that. So the blue square is going to be able to go on top of the yellow. So the layering is always in the order that you create the items. You can very easily change that layering by using the arrange tools right up here to bring um, objects to the front or send them to the back or to increment them forward or backward. And there's also those tools right up here on the modify menu under arrange. So for example, if I want this blue square to be underneath the yellow one, I can go ahead and say send to back. And now when I drag that over, you're going to see that the blue is behind the yellow. Now coming back down here, we've got these tra this transparency option. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to move that yellow square over there. And I'm going to say that this is 50% transparent. Let's see what we get. And you can see the darker blue now through that yellow. And many times you see this effect on images where you may have a um, border on the bottom that's sort of shaded out so you can see some of the image. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. I'm going to go ahead and delete those. I'm going to come back up here to my pages and I actually have a little raster image right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select it and copy it using control C and then I'm going to go back down here and paste it in. And what I'm going to go ahead and do now is I'm going to create a a box here, a semi-transparent box here and type some text in. So I'm going to go ahead and click the rectangle tool there and I'm going to go ahead and line up my control there and you can see the alignment tools come into play here and I'll release that. I'm going to change the color to something um, really dark like this maybe real dark brown right up here and then I'm going to go ahead and make the transparency 50%. Actually, we'll go ahead and make that a little bit darker, let's say 80%. And you can kind of, you can still see the background through there. But now I can use my text tool right here that we're going to talk more about in the next video to click in here. And I'm going to reduce the font size down to 22. And type this is a title. And then I'm going to go ahead and move that into position there. I'm going to change the font to white and I'm going to go ahead and make that a little bit more transparent so the background stands out a little bit more. We'll make it 60. And there you go. You can see that effect there. And a lot of times you do this kind of effect also with jQuery and uh, we'll have another um, video to that effect. But those are the three different options that I wanted to draw your attention to in this video. The ability to create some simple shapes and then using the properties panel to change the fill and the border or stroke style that goes around that object.